That Sonic Frontiers trailer, huh? Anyone else remember all the- If we don't get gameplay this time, I'm so fucking done with this fucking series. Sonic Team literally stole my dog, my fridge, and racked up a huge cable bill in my name by ordering a bunch of porn. It was them, I swear. I know, it didn't really bring as much detail as many of us were hoping for, but there actually was a surprising amount to unpack, or at the very least speculate on, in this minute or so long extended teaser trailer. But I guess the question that really needs to be asked, as we now find ourselves just a year out from the release of the game, is should we, as Sonic fans, be hyped? Isn't that a trailer's job after all? Get the audience hyped for release, showing just enough to create interest while holding the rest back to keep everyone guessing. Historically, hyped is a dangerous state of mind to find yourself in as a Sonic fan. It can, and often does, lead to complete and utter disappointment, as the game or announcement you've been waiting on doesn't even come close to living up to the hype. But other times, it can deliver on every single one of your expectations and then some. As Sonic fans, we quite often break the typical bell curve rule, in that we spend much of our time living on either end of the extreme when it comes to this series. And as such, a lot of people are very much either 100% hyped or 100% negative on Frontiers based on this trailer. What? The Sonic community is divided? No. My brain, though, has decided to be both, so this should be fun. There is plenty in this trailer I'm very curious about, and a lot of what we see actually ties in with some of the 50 titty million leaks we've been assaulted with over the last year. I know, even a broken clock is right twice a day, right? But some of these are way too specific to ignore. So, from other information in these same leaks, as well as small bits of information gleaned from the trailer, there's quite a lot to talk about here. So, let's get started, shall we? The trailer opens with a very familiar scene, as we get a more detailed shot compared to the reveal trailer of Sonic running through a vast forest. And I have to say, at first glance, the CGI looks very nice. Some serious Sonic Unleashed vibes happening here, purely in terms of its high quality cutscenes. Whether or not Frontiers will be half the game Unleashed was, uh, uh, did you get the reference? Cause some people say only half of Unleashed was good. <laughs> Sonic then notices that he's being pursued by something burrowing underground behind him, and we get an aerial shot of the chase as these weird spike-shaped drone things burst from the giant dust cloud behind Sonic. The drones seem to have a strange purple aura, not unlike some of the enemies in Breath of the Wild, which probably shouldn't come as much of a surprise. It's not like the inspiration for most of this game's aesthetic is exactly subtle, is it? Sonic is then warned of the imminent impact by a ghostly voice, that beckons him deeper into the forest, just narrowly avoiding the explosion. Apparently, this ghost voice belongs to Amy? Okay, so what happened? The extended cast of characters were ignored for so long by Sega that they just faded into some kind of incorporeal form? <laughs> yeah, that... that probably checks out. Apparently it was Amy, but then it wasn't, and then now it is again. The leaks seem to suggest it's something else entirely. You're new to Call-style partner to guide you on your journey or whatever. I agree with something Chowmix said though. The very first time we hear it, the time here in the forest, it does sound a lot like Tails to me, and I legit can only hear Colleen's voice here. Over here. Of course, it has been widely confirmed now by various people at Sega that it is Amy's voice we hear in the trailer. But which voice? And which time? I'm happy to be proven wrong in the final product if that's ultimately what happens. It's not like I have a preference either way or anything, but the very first time we hear it, I can only hear tales. Of course, as a fanbase, we very maturely had our torches and pitchforks out, as we've debated valiantly about the identity of these ghostly whispers, and that's yet another reason I enjoy this fanbase so much. We all love this series so much that we shout each other to death with caring. 
And that's beautiful. The energy from the explosion seems to give Sonic power, as he uses the energy to perform that weird pixelated phase boost thing we seen in the original teaser. He bursts out of the forested area and reaches an oceanside cliff, lending way to all the speculation that Frontiers would take place on an island of some sort. This and some other cool info has since actually been confirmed on the Sonic Frontiers official website, where we got some sweet looking screenshots and small snippets on the basic premise for the game. Apparently, we should look forward to experiencing the thrill of high velocity open zone freedom. Open zone apparently being their buzzword for open world. I'm really just wondering if most of Frontiers will take place in the open world like Breath of the Wild, or like Sonic Adventure 1, will the open world basically serve as a supersized hub, where loads of side activities and challenges can be done, and that the main stage entrances are just dotted all around it, probably unlocked by doing stuff in the open world. Personally, I'm hoping it's a mixture of both. Traditional Sonic stages supplemented with an open world, as going all in on a purely open world Sonic game is a bit risky, because if for whatever reason they don't pull it off, all of their game is now bad. Whether or not the leaks were genuine or they just guessed, they seem to point towards a mixture of action stages and open world gameplay. And again, regardless of whether or not any of them are accurate, this is definitely the way I would go with it. And if what they said is true about less or no 2D sections, that's even better. Let's leave the 2D sections to the classic games. You know, where they were fun. Sit down, Rush fans. This wasn't aimed at you. I'm just not a big fan of the lazy hybrid 2D sections in 3D games just to pad out the stages. We're also set to fight powerful enemies as we speed through the Starfall Islands. Hmm. Islands, plural. Interesting and actually a pretty good way of implementing the whole multiple biomes thing it goes on to mention. Use a chain of islands to serve as a location for the different climates, as opposed to the likes of Angel, Flicky, and all the other magical nature-defying islands that have appeared in this beautifully true-to-life series. The fact that we also look to be getting enemies and maybe even bosses on the world map may lend some credibility to the idea that Sonic can level up, and might even have a skill tree in this game. For me, it just gives more of a reason to tolerate no doubt respawning enemies and very likely repetitive combat, because you're constantly working towards something and get a sense of progression from the gameplay loop. And if you get to unlock cool new abilities this way, like the alleged spin cycle, then that's pretty cool, and an interesting change from the old school find the abilities hidden away in the hubs and stages. The reason I even bring up the likes of Spin Cycle, your washing machine was doing it before it was cool by the way, is because we may actually see it happening in the very first teaser trailer. Sonic tracing a circle as a line forms behind him, the murals maybe representing whatever force on the island is granting him these powers. It is rumored we will be getting a lot of Chaos Emerald lore after all, or it could be nothing. Back in the trailer, just as the camera is panning around to show whatever was chasing Sonic, it cuts away to some in-engine aerial landscape shots, some very choppy in-engine shots, where the camera pans above the environment and we get our first good look at some very Breath of the Wild styled structures and monuments. Just before we get into the substance of the locations we've been shown, I just have to say, I really hope this was Switch footage. It wasn't. Because if this is how the game looks in motion on PC or next-gen consoles, Yeesh. that being said, there is a year left for them to optimize and polish the game up, so what we see here may not be a fair representation of the final product. We'll just have to wait and see. This really is a short trailer, and the information starts to come thick and fast from here on out, so I'll just be going through it in the order it's shown, and injecting some considered thoughts speculation, and, you know, some flat out hyperbole as we go. Sound fair? We get our first look at the Sheikah style towers, which I'm guessing will literally share the same purpose as those, or any Ubisoft towers in a Ubi game, in that you scale them to expand the map and fill in details for the area. But we should probably come back to this in a bit, as we get to see them in more detail later in the trailer. We pass through some of the different environments we can expect to see in the open world before getting to the shop that ruffled a lot of people's feathers. The dreaded Sonic Forces model. Oh Jesus! No, I'm out! They used the Forces model! What? No, I, I don't care if it's a teaser trailer. Cancel my pre-order. No, shut up. Cancel my pre-order. No, I'm gonna go play Sonic Adventure and spoon my Dreamcast for a bit. What even are these stubby pieces of shit? In all seriousness, I get it. 
I get why some people might be mad at this. For me, Sonic's design has always been a huge part of the character's appeal, and there has always been something about him on a superficial level that people connect with. Personally, the adventure design, i.e. when his quills were the longest, is my absolute favourite 3D Sonic design. I feel the longer quills help emphasise his speed, and adds another element to the movement of his model during his many actions. And something about those droopy, spaghetti-like poses of the adventure era always gave the impression that Sonic was literally dripping with coolness, his constant slouching and twisting, helping to put across his carefree attitude. Look, this could just be a placeholder. In the CGI shots, his quills seem fine, so maybe the in-game model just isn't ready to show yet. Also, it is a shot of him from behind, so maybe it's just an unfortunate trick of the camera. Either way, the topic of Sonic's model here only serves to distract from everything else we can see in the shot. The maps themselves do seem pretty huge, but I just wonder how well that giant open map will translate once Sonic's speed is let run loose all over it. Will it seem so large even at high speed? I'm looking forward to finding out. This weird shrine almost gives off a broken Chaos Emerald vibe to me. Special stage entrances maybe? I don't know, I may be completely wrong, and these could just be regular stage entrances or something, but the shape is definitely interesting, and nothing at all like the two Sheikah Towers we can see on either side of the image. The draw distance also seems pretty good, with landmarks we see featured prominently in official screenshots, clearly visible in the distance from other locations. These rundown runes by a waterfall share a lot of their design with the murals on the game's title card. Next, we get another waterfall, but this time with a strange monument or totem-looking structure in front of it. The base nearly looks like it could be a seat or a throne of some kind, but I'm more convinced this might be some form of fast travel marker, a landmark you have to activate to enable fast travel to and from. Either that, or it could just be part of some wider puzzle or autosave feature. The next area shows another one of these monuments and may blow my fast travel point out of the water already, given its unreachable looking location. But it still could be, since it looks like the landmass on the right could easily serve as a ramp to reach it, maybe with the right ability. Either way, these monuments look to be important, as this one seems to be activated with a red glowing sphere at the top. These nighttime shots are very interesting, as it potentially implies a day and night cycle for the open world. If so, I'll be interested to see how they make use of it this time. Daytime has Eggman enemies and nighttime has purple glowing Zelda ones? Probably. In this area, we can see a pretty high-tech looking bridge, when compared to everything else in the rest of this ancient looking place, spanning a gap above a small valley, and some strange markings along the wall. I'm thinking, maybe again through the skill tree mentioned in some of the leaks, that Sonic will probably learn a wall running ability he can use to traverse walls that bear these markings. This gorgeous hillside of flowers in the evening sun has some interesting red structures in the background, and while these things here may just be innocuous pipes of some kind, I'm guessing they may just be grind rails. Grind rails have pretty much been a staple since Sonic Adventure 2, so there's no reason to think that they won't return here. Also, collectible hidden up here, anyone? While it's hard to tell, these structures here could be huts or houses of some kind, maybe a quest hub area with actual people, because as the trailer goes on, you really start to get the impression this place is gonna feel very empty and lonely. Let's hope it's not just a big empty world with little to do and nobody worthwhile to see. I mean, it's clear they have enemies and NPCs turned off when they captured the footage for the trailer, but still. And hey, even if there is very few people, at least it looks pretty, am I right? I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. These broken arches along a path seem to lead to the giant Breath of the Wild style triangular structure we see from a distance in the Forces model shot. And the Sheikah Tower we see here is much more detailed than the long shots we got before. And you can clearly see some flat panels running up the sides, which again, I'm guessing, feeds back into the wall running ability we spoke about earlier. Back to CGI now and we get this pretty gloomy scene where Sonic runs out into a grassy field and we see something huge reflected in his eyes. And for me, what does sound like Amy is her trying to warn him of danger. We see that signature pink aura again flashing on the giant looming shape as the screen cuts away to the game's title card complete with logo and holiday 2022 release window. 
As was heavily speculated, Frontiers looks set to appear on pretty much every system under the sun, with the main worry I have here being that PC is mentioned, but absolutely zero talk of Steam. The game does have a listing on the Steam store, but until I see it mentioned specifically, I'll be preparing myself for another Epic Store timed exclusive. Just as the trailer appeared over, it abruptly cuts back to Sonic having a Shadow of the Colossus looking boss fight with a giant metal creature. I'm guessing this was what we seen reflected in his eyes, and whether this is the final boss we seen mentioned in the leaks, the one you apparently used Super Sonic to defeat, or just part of the opening cutscene. This is where the trailer ends. Admittedly, this trailer doesn't really give much away, or fill me with confidence for its beautiful open world locations. I mean, after watching, I still don't have any strong ideas about how they might be used, or what we will actually be doing in them. I can, however, see a metric shit ton of opportunity, and cool ways to make other characters important again. How can we have such gorgeous locations full of ancient ruins and history, and not include Knuckles in some meaningful way? We already know that Amy will be included, now we just have to hope she's actually important to the story, and written in a way that develops her character. With it being confirmed that Ian Flynn is writing, I'm a lot more confident now than I would have been, say, a year ago, that the characters will be written well. We'll just have to wait and see how restricted he is by the inevitable direction from Sonic Team. It would be great if he found a way of including Shadow, and maybe even Silver in the story, preferably without just shoehorning them in like we've seen in Forces. I'm really interested to see the performance of the current voice actors when they have some proper writing to work with might help put to bed once and for all where the modern issues with these characters lie. In terms of what we were shown in the trailer, I'm pretty torn. Is this just early footage to get across a concept? Officially, this is the first time we've seen an open world for Sonic mentioned. People who don't follow the series religiously may not have even known this was a thing, and for them, this was a pretty big reveal in itself. I have a friend. No, seriously, I do. Please believe me who left the series after Shadow the Hedgehog all the way back in 2005, and he is actually pretty hyped after watching this trailer. So he will be the benchmark I use when trying to understand a more casual fan's perspective on it. No gameplay? Yeah, that's... that's, um... huh. I basically have two thoughts on this, really. One being confirmation of all our worst fears, and that they are afraid to show any gameplay for fear of blowback and destroying this game's chances a whole year out from launch. Or they have loads of gameplay to show, but after Forces, they just want it to be as polished as possible to put everyone's minds at rest. Which one of those is true? I'll let you be the judge. All I know is, putting footage of a new Sonic game out to this fandom must be a pretty terrifying thing, so I'm happy to give the benefit of the doubt for the time being. My biggest fear is that open world games have kind of been done to death. Why Sonic Team is so far behind on this trend and then turns around and announces it like, ta-da! I'll never know, but I guess, in a less sarcastic asshole sense, it is a new thing for this series. And maybe that's a better perspective to have on it. I was never really sure how well Sonic would translate into this type of game, but I'll go in with an open mind. Like I said before, I have ideas in my head that could be pretty cool, but that doesn't mean any of them will happen. I just hope this isn't like a shovelware Ubisoft game clone with annoying minigames or button mashing orgies to soak up my time and pad out the runtime for the game. I don't envy Sega and Sonic Team when the time does come to show gameplay, but I'm sure they are the best judges of the best time to show it. Like, I'm super eager to see it, but I'd rather it be at its best when I do. Wait, the Sonic Adventure 2 soap shoes might be in it? But what about you guys? What are your thoughts on the trailer, and what are your expectations for Frontiers after watching it? And crucially, do you see much opportunity for Sonic's supporting cast to have any meaningful part in its story? Let me know your thoughts on everything in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more like this from me on Sonic or gaming in general, please consider dropping a like, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that bell icon to be notified when I release more. And the happiest of New Year's to all of you fine people. And a huge thank you for helping make 2021 as awesome as it was.
I'm working on some really cool stuff at the moment, both solo and collaborative, on the supporting cast of Sonic, and why each and every one of them individually is important to the series. So expect a lot more character and story analysis, as well as more coverage of the games themselves throughout 2022. A year I'm hoping will be a big one for the channel. You guys, as always, have been fantastic. And all those simple clicks where you've liked, subscribed, left all your awesome comments, and otherwise engaged with the channel are a huge help, and all of your support is seriously appreciated. A big thank you for watching, and as always guys, take care.